The photoelectric effect gave a lot of physicists a headache in the early 20th century because they couldn't really understand what was going on. Eventually, Einstein explained exactly what was going on and got a Nobel Prize for it in 1927. Uh, it's very good evidence for explaining light as a particle. So, what happens? When a high-intensity light is shone on a metal, it, it releases electrons from that metal, producing an electrical current. Before we go on to talk about it, you need to know about this guy's famous equation. This is Max Planck, who was a German guy in the early 20th century who came up with this equation. E is the energy of a photon, which can be measured in joules, or if it's very small amounts of energy, electron volts. Uh, Planck's constant is used in this, and it's a very useful constant in a lot of physics equations, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, and F is the frequency of the light or the radiation. It's kind of an interesting equation because on one side you've got E, energy of a photon, which is a particle, and on F, the other side, you've got frequency of a wave. So it's a good sort of way of translating between waves and particles. So the photoelectric effect, if you turn on a, a red light, the red light is not going to have that much energy. The red photons are going to strike the metal and the frequency is going to be too low because they, if the frequency is low, so is the energy of the photon. They're not going to have enough energy to release those electrons. But when you turn on a blue light, the blue photons, which are much higher frequency, will strike the electrons they will exceed what's called the threshold frequency, the lowest frequency needed to release a photoelectron. And then uh, the photons will be absorbed, the electrons will leave, becoming photoelectrons. Think of it as kind of like a coconut shy, a coconut representing an electron. If you chuck a ping pong ball at a coconut, it's not going to shift it. No, it's going to be too low a threshold frequency. But if you chuck a tennis ball at a coconut, it's going to have enough energy, in this case, to release the electron or the coconut. So we've met what's called the work function. The tennis ball has just the right amount of energy to release the electron. Now, if you chuck something even heavier, like say a cricket ball at a coconut, all that energy is going to be transferred, and the excess energy above the work function is going to be transferred into kinetic energy of the electron. So the energy of the photon will go into making the work, meeting the work function, enough energy to release the electron, and the leftover energy will get used uh, as kinetic energy by the electron. Here we can see what happens uh, in uh, the effect on a gold leaf electroscope. The gold leaf is charged in all cases, and the first case with the red light is positively or negatively charged, and the red light is just too low a frequency, it's not got enough energy under E equals HF, to release photoelectrons. The positively charged zinc plate has no effect either, no matter, regardless of the uh, frequency of the light you shine on it, because it's, uh, it's positively charged, it's holding onto its electrons far too tightly. The negatively charged zinc plate, however, is only too happy to give up electrons, especially when you give it some nice high energy photons from a UV light. Now, the, uh, the photoelectric effect is very good, uh, it's very interesting because the electrons are emitted immediately. There's no delay at all. Increasing the intensity of the light increases the number of photoelectrons, but not their kinetic energy. Low frequency light, no, ma no matter how bright it is, will not cause the emission of photoelectrons. And increasing the, in the total energy of the illumination, or the total intensity of the light, um, will not affect the kinetic energy. It's all down to the individual photons. So this shows that light is a part of the core because if, life is a, if a light is a wave, um, waves increase in energy the higher their amplitude. So a brighter light should cause photoemission, but it doesn't. It's all to do with the frequency, not the intensity of light. Photoelectrons should be emitted constantly, and they aren't. I mean, you would think that the waves would continuously dump energy on, photo on the metal therefore saving up energy enough to release photoelectrons, like kind of like filling up a glass until it's overflowing and releasing enough energy, therefore, to release it. But uh, they don't. So it's very good evidence for light particles. So, in summary, the higher the frequency of the light, the higher the energy of a photon, the Max Planck's equation. High energy photons transfer energy to electrons in a metal, which gives them enough energy to leave, and is great evidence for light as a particle. Hope you've enjoyed this. Max Planck.